it actually they they, uh, they have uh, many um, um, biological uh, functions. So basically, they are biologically meaningful uh, features. And um, so in a consensus classroom, we need to choose a clustering method. So um, I think um, k, uh, k means is the most used uh, method. So in COLA, we suggest or recommend to you um, SK means, a spherical k means, which is a variant of the standard k means clustering, but it uses the cosine similarity instead of the Euclidean uh, similarity. So it's like project all the data points to a, a sphere or a, a hypersphere and just to apply this um, um, K means like method, but on the uh, surface of this hypersphere to um, to look for groups. So it's it's, it's kind of like a correlation based K means clustering. And so when we have a list of individual uh, clusterings, then we can have the prob probability of uh, uh, two samples in the same subgroup, and the, res the result is represented as a so called consensus matrix. And this matrix is a symmetric matrix, and the rows are columns are the samples in the or the columns in the original matrix, and the values are between zero and one. The value is the probability of the sample I and sample G in the uh, same um, in the same subgroup. So with this consistent matrix, we can actually we can evaluate the stability of the classification. Uh, so in this, the left plot shows a uh, unstable uh, classification, and the right one shows a stable classification. So we can see. On the right, the the color either blue or white. So white means the two samples and they are, they are never in the same subgroup. And the color is blue, it means the samples are always in a subgroup. So the red one is a stable uh, clustering, and and the left one is uh, unstable uh, clustering. And we all normally we will choose. We do not know how many subgroups there are. We will we will try a list of. Um, different numbers of, of groups, so we can then we need some method to to decide uh, which k or k is the number of subgroups, which k is better. And there is one method called the PAC. The PAC stands for the proportion of the ambiguous clustering. So again, the left heat map is unstable uh, classification, and the, the the right one that is a um, stable class classification. So if we make a uh, a CDF of the consensus uh, values in the two uh, metrics. So the red line corresponds to the to the left one, and the blue line corresponds to the the, the, the right one. So, for example, for the red one, uh, the the right one, which is stable classification, we can see because the consensus value is either cl very close to zero or very close to one. So this CDF line is very flat in the middle. But as a comparison, the the, the left one. Which is the the red line in in the most right plot? Actually, you can see, and this it has a, this a step um, pattern. So the the PAC me measures and is is the distance the 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 distance on the y direction. The so so we just pick one value which is close to zero, for example, zero point one, and another value, for example, zero point nine, and the PAC is the, the difference of these two points, and we can see. When the classification is stable, the value of the PAC value is very small, and when the classification is not stable, the PAC value is very large. So we use one minus PAC to measure the stability of the class the consensus classification. So when one minus PAC is larger than zero point nine, we say the classification is uh, stable. And the COLA also provides many um, visualizations for interpreting um, the consensus uh, uh, clustering. Uh, Results. So the first one is the consensus heat map. The second one is so called the membership heat map, which every row is an individual um, individual clustering. And we can see we can see in this data set, in this example, the um, the individual uh, clustering are very consistent consistent. And th this plot shows the different metrics to decide um, which k is the best. And and the the plot, uh, the bottom left is the dimension reduction plot, like the UMAP or TSNI or the PCA, and the the bottom middle is the signature, the heat map for signatures, uh, signature genes, for example. And the COLA, um, the features of COLA package, it allows to integrate um, self-defined methods. So if you remember in this slide, like in every step, you can choose a different a method, for example, for feature selection, for uh, clustering, 
partitioning. So the Cola allows you to use the, the predefined method that is already integrated in the Cola package. You can also use self-defined method. And the Cola will run multiple methods simultaneously, and it provides nice correlation to help you to select the, the best combination of methods. So for example, in this left plot, there are uh, four um, feature selection methods, six uh, cluster methods, and this is a, con a, a consensus heat map, and we can very easily see this one, this one, and this one. This show very stable uh, clustering. And for a specific method, there are also plots to help you to, to choose, to decide which K is the best. For example, here, maybe you can see K equals two or K equals three are the best or are the most stable classification. But when K increases to four, five or six, the classification becomes unstable. So it's very straightforward to, to see um, which, result, uh, which result is the best. And we also did some benchmark. We applied COLA to um, several hundreds of public data sets, and we find we found the ATC with SK means normally generates um, more subgroups and also uh, stable subgroups. So in, in this poll, you can see this is the or more on the top means the classification the classification um, classifications are more stable. You can see basically they are all ATC or SK means uh, integra integrated method. And according to our experience, the, the method, if you use ATC or SK means, it can generate new subgroups because this, it's a correlation-based method. And I think uh, um, a lot of other methods, they, are, they, they use this uh, variance-based method or use Euclidean the distance-based method. So um, according to our experience, the ATC and SK means can generate new subgroups, which is different from, uh, for example, current and subgroups or subtypes if they do cancer studies. And we also find the new, these new subgroups found by ATC or SK means are more biologically meaningful. For example, we, we see um, from the survival data, they show a more, signific more, si more significant difference on the survival. So the COLA has been published in last year. So if you are interested, you can, you can check the, the paper. And there are some uh, two major limits of the standard consensus, cl uh, consensus clustering uh, method. The first is it cannot separate major subgroups and secondary subgroup, subgroups. So the major subgroups are those subgroups that show big difference, and the secondary subgroups they they, they show um, um, smaller difference. So if if a data has contains both like big subgroups and small subgroups, and normally the small subgroups or secondary subgroup, subgroups cannot be and separated. And the second limitation is when there are a huge number of subgroups in the data, normally in the standard the consensus cl cluster method can only identify to a small number of cases. So it cannot identify all the subgroups. It will merge some subgroups. So I will, I will, demonstrate, I will demonstrate these two limitations by um, examples. So first is um, demonstrate the difficulties to distinguish uh, to simult simultaneously distinguish major and secondary subgroups. So this is um, based on randomly generated data. So um, I generated um, four subgroups. So the red and blue, they are major subgroups, and this green pupil are the secondary subgroups. You can see the difference are very small. And then the PCA shows the sub the, these four groups can be very well separated, but the green one, people one, they cannot be separated in the first principal component, but they can be separated if we take the first two principal component. And if we apply the, the standard consensus clustering, actually the best K, the best number of subgroups is three. We can also confirm this by this membership heat map. So when K is three, the clustering is perfect. You can see it almost um, agrees for all these individual uh, clus uh, clusters, clusterings. But when we set K, I mean, when we set to four groups, it, the, uh, and the, the the classification becomes unstable. So only in 10% uh, of all these individual clusterings, these two subgroups can be separated, but in, in the, the remaining 90% of the clustering, they cannot be uh, separate, which, which uh, results, it will not choose four groups as the result, but it will only choose three groups as the final result. And the small k problem, so this is the, again, the HSMM single cell data set. So, the, the A is the, the top feature, top 1,000 genes that 
we will apply the consensus clustering on. So this heat map, heat map shows very clearly there are many uh, subgroups in this data set. But if we apply the standard um, consensus clustering, you can see actually it prefers either to pick k equals to two, or if we allow some robustness, maybe we can choose k equals to six as the best number of the subgroups. But I mean, obviously there are more than six sub subgroups. Maybe there are 10 or 11 or 12. So can, if we check the membership uh, heat map and the consensus heat map, we can see when k is two or three or four, the classification are quite stable, but when it increases to five, six, seven, eight, this, the classification becomes unstable. It's because when there are more subgroups, the probability of two samples um, um, being in different subgroups will increase, which will decrease the stability of the uh, classification. So we, in the COLA, we propose a second method called the hierarchical uh, consensus clustering. So this is a very simple method. The main idea is to apply the consensus clustering in a hierarchical way. So like if we have a, a cohort, so we first apply the, the consensus clustering, but only with a small number of subgroups, let's say three subgroups, and we found three subgroups uh, are stable. And then for each, uh, each subset of the samples, we recursively apply the consensus clustering to every subset of samples. And this process is applied hierarchically and the process stops and until some criterions are met. So then we will have a hierarchy of the, the, the subgroups. So again, we apply this uh, hierarchical consensus uh, partitioning, HCP, on this HSS, HSMM dataset. We can, now we can detect a lot of subgroups, 12 subgroups, and they are basically they are well separated in this TSNI plot. And you can see also the the figure C, the, um, the, the signature genes are, are very, I mean, the patterns are very clear. And the figure D shows these genes are biologically meaningful. And the figure E shows each, uh, HCP classification is stable. So I just, we just repeatedly uh, run HCP for 20 times. And this is a, basically it shows the classification is almost agree very well in these 20, uh, 20 rounds. We also apply HCP on the PMBC data set, the single cell and, uh, data set, and we compare the HCP classification to the SORAT classification and, classification and the standard COLA, so the CP uh, corresponds to uh, consensus partition, the standard consensus partition classification. So basically you can see the HCP can find more uh, subgroups compared to the standard CP, and um, there, there are some agreement to the SORAT classification, and there are also some disagreement to the uh, SORAT classification. So basically, the red, uh, the red cluster in SORAT, and it was an, an, and it was an separated into two smaller groups. You can see here, this is the the COLA HCP classification, and this is the SORAT classification. And actually, we find that actually these two subgroups are quite similar. I mean, the gene expression in these two groups are very similar. And if we choose a, a, a loose uh, cutoff for HCP, actually they can also be separated into two, two groups. But I, I would say the genes in, this, in these two subgroups are very similar. And the figure E is uh, the, the heat map for the signature genes in this classification. And the figure E shows the stability of the HCP classification on PMBC data set. Basically, they're very stable. And then we also applied HCP on this central uh, nervous system tumor data set. So this is an ambitious analysis. This data set contains more, uh, almost 3,000 samples and 14 tumor types, and um, in total 91 subtypes. And we want to see if we apply HCP on this data set, what's, how, uh, how, um, how well the HCP classific classification agree to this 91 subtype classification. And we can see basically, the, the, I mean, we cannot say they are perfectly agreed, but you can see they agreed very well by figure B and figure D. And, and there are some comments on the HCP method. So basically, if a data is very heterogeneous, it will generate, if you apply HCP, it will generate many, many more subgroups. Um, so this is an example um, from a glioblastoma data set, very heterogeneous. And if we apply HCP um, on, this, on this data set, if we, we will see there are, um, there, are, there are many, many subgroups, and some, some subgroups are very small, only contain and six or seven samples. I mean, if we look at the signature heat map here, I mean, indeed, this kind of 
this classification makes sense, but I mean, with too many subgroups, maybe it's uh, maybe it's, it it is meaningful only for this data set, but it's it 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 lose uh, it loses gener generality um, from other data set focused on the same biological object. So this HTTP is also published in in this in also published. So if you are interested, you can also check this paper. So last uh, the last one is. And we have some optimization from large data set. So basically consensus clustering because it repeated the wrong clustering many, many times. And it's a time consuming process. So for huge data, for huge data set, we implement a so-called dumb sampling consensus clustering. So the idea is very simple. So basically randomly sample a subset of samples to perform consensus, uh, consensus clustering. And then we look for the signatures and then we pre predict the class labels for the unselect uh, samples. Okay, now I will show you some uh, code very quickly. So use cola is very simple. Uh, basically, you just run um, these these uh, several lines. You just use run or consensus partition method, and you just provide your matrix, and it will perform the consensus partitioning method with um, I think by default, it will try four different feature selection methods and it's five, uh, five clustering methods. And when you, when you finish the analysis, you just run this color report on this object and it will generate a very detailed report for the whole analysis. So basically, I mean, these code are runnable. You basically, so this block basically um, like a processing of the matrix. And for the hierarchical consensus the partition, it's similar. So this block of code just to generate a matrix, it's M. And this time you, we use hierarchical partitioning function and we just provide the matrix and we just run this function and we use color report function to generate the, the report. And I will show you this report. This is an example for the um, standard uh, consensus clustering. So it will generate a very detailed report with many, many plots, stuff. And if we, I just quickly go through this report. So this, if you, if you just uh, type this object, it will tell you which functions you can use for this object. And we can also see the, the distribution of the data. This is like a QC and then some tables, like which, which method. So here we tried four. Uh, feature selection method and and the six uh, class method. So combination are uh, twenty four methods for the clustering, and this shows the the best k for each method and these uh, different statistics and which are the stable uh, classifications. Some plot consensus consensus heat map for different k membership for different k. There are many, many plots, and this is the, the overview of the clustering from different methods for different K and many, many plots. And then we can also go to the result for individual method. Let's check, just pick this one, 80 cent SK means. So this is the, the, the plot for different K, like integrated plot. And there, so this plot shows which K is the best, helps you to decide. And this is the, the, the class labels, classifications here. And this plot consensus heat map, membership, and signature genes. Da, 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 da. And anyway, there are many, many plots. And this is the report for the hierarchical consensus clustering. So when you type the, uh, the object, it will print some information like the hierarchy of the uh, classification and these functions that can be applied to this object. Again, this uh, density distribution for um, each sample. And da, 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 this is not important. And some uh, values for every node. So we'll see whether the classification is stable on the node. And here we can see the hierarchy of the subgroup. And we can also like um, adjust some uh, parameters. It, see, it will give you different uh, different levels of this classification. And then this, uh, like on every node, uh, each node is only a subset of samples where the standard consensus clustering is applied. 
So if you check, if you go to the result for individual node, it basically it's a, they just report for the standard um, consensus clustering result, but only for the subset, the current subset of samples. And the last example I want to show. So these two examples, they are all based on the gene expression data. And the last example I want to show is, uh, is applied to a methylation array data set. So in general, the use is very similar. You just provide your, your, your matrix here, but there's, there are some other things we need to be careful here. We need to set scale rows equals to false because this is a methylation data, which we will not scale the rows and which, and and in this example, this data set has its central nervous system tumor data set. It contains almost 3,000 samples. Here we just set subset equals to 500, which the done, the done sampling uh, consensus classing will be automatically applied to every uh, subset of the samples on every, let's say, node. And we also set a minimum difference or minimum methylation difference because this is a methylation data set and we we were we are only interested in the the subgroups which show large uh, methylation difference differences, and for the other basically the other settings basically are similar as it's the normal use of this hierarchical partitioning method, and in the end they just call COLA report. It will generate um, a very comprehensive report for your analysis, and so basically that's all for the COLA package, and. Um, and all these examples are runnable. Uh, um, so I will, I will, um, so you can, so if, if, you, if you check the, the paper of COLA, you will find this code there, I think in the supplementary files. And um, so if you have any questions, you can ask me here, or you can also write me an email or ask me uh, on GitHub. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. Do we have any questions in the audience? Okay, I have one online um, from Ryan C. Thompson. How does the hierarchical clustering uh, decide when to stop adding additional levels to the clustering hierarchy? Is it when k-means chooses k equals one as the best or some other criterion? Uh, there are several, um, I can show you here uh, in the report, it's, you will see such, this one. So you will see there are some, it tells you these the reasons where the, the, the hierarchic um, process stops at a certain node. So the C means the, the clustering on the, for example, there are nine, the 90 samples, the consensus clustering um, is not stable on these 60 samples. So the clustering here is stopped. So these uh, 60 samples are treated as a node, as a leaf of the uh, hierarchy. And the B is, uh, there are not the number, there's also a minimum number of, of samples um, as a cutoff. And the C is there also a minimum number of sign signatures um, and on the node. So there are several um, criteria to decide whether the hierarchy process uh, stops. Yeah, that's wonderful. We have a comment from Thomas uh, Bardemans. Um, the hierarchical expansion is great. I used the standard COLA clustering in the past, and I found that the lower K was more stable while I had reason to believe that there were more populations. This is going to help a lot. Thanks. Yeah, but I want to say um, we need to be careful to use this hierarchical consensus partitioning. I would suggest first to use the normal, uh, normal consensus clustering, and if you really think you have many, many subgroups, then you can try the hierarchical one. Great. Right. Um, I was just going to ask, I saw you applied this to single cell RNA sequencing. Um, did you have any computational um, requirements uh, that you might suggest, like such as parallelization, multi-threading? Um, what were your takes on that? Um, because um, this package was originally uh, designed for the bug RNA-seq data, methylation data, where we do not have so many um, samples, and, and we can, I mean, Theoretically, you can apply it to any type as long as it's a matrix. And I mean, we can apply it to the single cell seq with, let's say, 2,000 
3,000 sales, but I think with more, it will be very, very slow. And that's also why I implemented some uh, sampling um, and method. And of course, there's a prioritization is supported in the package. That's great. Uh, I got a question from Ryan Thompson again. Um, this does the parallelization support para, uh, bio parallel or only multi core? Uh, I use parallel. Parallel. Great. Thanks for all the questions. Oh, and I have one in the back. One moment. I'm going to turn on the camera. So we can uh, okay. Turn the camera on. Hello. Um, so uh, this looks like a, a very interesting method, and um, some of my uh, colleagues uh, like to use uh, WGCNA um, uh, for finding um, um, classifying genes into modules. Then once you have a module, you can find an eigen gene, ask if that eigen gene separates samples in some way. So I, I think here we call it your like co-clustering, right? The um, samples and the and the genes. So you can find um, already genes that explain some clusters, assuming you remove effects from like um, cell type composition, age, other other covariates. Um, would you say that you uh, we could compare the genes that you get uh, for each of your modules against like WGCNA, or would that be like um, an inappropriate comparison. Yeah, thanks for your question because um, my colleague also uh, mentioned me to compare to uh, WDC and A. Um, I don't know because I haven't uh, thought about that, but I fear the, the feature selection method proposed in um, COLA, which is ATC, I think it's kind of like because this is a correlation based uh, method and WDC is like co and expression network. Um, because when it constructs co expression network, it also calculates for every gene, calculates the correlation to all the other genes. I think there might be some similarities, but I haven't uh, looked at that yet. And so I, I, I have a question. Um, so does, do, do you find the, for when it goes to a single cell data, um, do you find the normalization like, does it really affect um, the consensus partitioning clustering? Um, I don't know because I'm, I have no experience with single cell um, RNA seq data. So, the examples here basically, I use public um, data set where they already provide the code for, norm for normalizing the single cell um, data. So, I don't know how much it, it will affect the consensus clustering. Okay, because because sometimes like people normalize by SE transform, people use like log trans log transformations. And I was just wondering if like if you've just tried cons consensus partitioning on different normalization methods, but mm -hmm. that's totally okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great talk, by the way. Thank you. Any more? Any more questions? The room or okay. I had one uh, just a comment um, from Ryan Thompson um, was discussing um, I would like to recommend looking into supporting bio parallel since this will allow parallelization across multiple machines and compute clusters mm -hmm. great so in, initially I use an, an MCL apply and that's not an good because um, it will just fork the whole um, R process. Then I, I change to snow. I think I, 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 will, I will check the LC parallel. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great, it's, a, it's definitely, um, I think where there's a lot of discussion. I've always used futures and for each, so. <laughs> okay, well, um, I don't see any more questions. Thank you for a wonderful uh, presentation and um, always, uh, you have amazing visualizations, so uh, much appreciated. Great contribution. Yeah, thank you too.